like music, eh? Maybe you should go to work in a phonograph store. Or maybe I should rent a 20-piece orchestra. Look at that boy piling up while you play with the hoity-goity. I'll catch up, Mr. Gert. You bet you will if you have to work all night. And that goes for the rest of you goyles, too. I got work to get out. How can I get it out with somebody popping up behind my back all the time? Popping here, popping there, popping out to get a drink of water, then popping out to... What do you think I'm running here, a coffee clutch? Now bear down on them machines. What do you think I'm running here? Coffee clutch or something, huh? How can I get the work out with your girls popping up and down all the time? Popping up for this and popping up for that and popping up for the hearty gunny. Now bear down on the machines. Ah, the sewing machine, the sewing machine. A girl's the best friend. If I didn't have my sewing machine, I'd have come to no good end. But a bob and a bob and a pedal, a pedal and wheel, the wheel by day. So by night, I feel so weary that I never get up. The sewing machine, the sewing machine, a friend in need. If I didn't have my sewing machine, a wicked life I'd lead. But a bob and a bob and a pedal, a pedal and dream about the romance. So by night I feel so weary that I never get out to dance. Oh, the sewing machine, the sewing machine, my pride and joy. If I didn't have my sewing machine, I'd have married James McCoy. But I bob and a bob and a pedal, a pedal and bat the end of Jim. Cause by night I get so weary, I don't even look good to him. I got a boss, he looks like a horse, his name's Joe Goyt. I'm willing to bet the wages I get, that face of his must hoit. While I'm bobbing and bobbing and pedal the pedal, he keeps his eyes on me. Oh, I've never had a nightmare where I didn't meet Mr. Gee. So, you think I was talking to my half, huh? Just for that, you're all Dr. Half Day's pay. How do you like that? Oh, look, Mr. Gert, don't take it out on those girls. It was all my fault. And I'm sorry. Honest, I am. You're sorry, huh? Mr. Goyt, his face must hoit. Nightmares you're having, that's funny. Oh, I was only clowning. Well, I think you're swell. Oh, come on, be a nice guy. Those kids need the dough. You wouldn't really dock them, would you? Well, that all depends. It depends on what? Oh, on your being nice to me. Oh, I'm always nice to you, Mr. Gert. Joe's the name. <laughs> Joe? Lay off me, you big A, I'll knock your teeth out. <laughs> oh. Child, well done. You very definitely have a way with you, my dear. A girl's best friend is a good loop and right. Very effective, too, my child. Oh, Miss Gibbs. I must have had one of my dizzy spells. When I was her age, lots of chaps got dizzy spells. With me, it was the left. <laughs> my costume, please. I'm in a hurry. Come. Oh, gosh, Miss Gibbs. I remember seeing you in Thundercloud. I've seen it twice. Gee, who you drink that poison? You sure do die elegant. Thank you, child. You flatter me. Oh, it ain't only you. It's anybody in show business. Well, I think they're the most wonderful people there is. Then I take it you like the theater. Like it? Oh, gosh, Miss Gibbs. If I could only be on a stage, why... Just to think about it makes me sick at my stomach. Child. Here it is. Ah. 98 bucks. Very reasonable. My secretary will send you a check. Got them costumes? It's strictly for cash. But my... Get her on the phone. She brings down the cash and the garment is yours. Impossible. We open in Danbury tonight. I'm on my way to the train now. Coil, put it back in stock. Oh, gee. Wait. Have this child come to the station with me. I'm meeting my secretary there. She'll give her a check. She'll give her the cash. You 
colloping Scrooge. Are you insinuating I'm a deadbeat? I ain't insinuating nothing, just no checks. Very well. You shall have your paltry pennies. And now, you greedy, impolite lout, open the door for a lady. Get going, and if you give her the costume without the cash, you're stuck for it. Harry, Harry, I can't stand for any further delay. In another five minutes, they'll be tearing my theater apart. Where is this kid? I don't know, but we'll open anyway. Open. Come on, hurry up. Open, open with what? Who's going to play Lady Capulet? He is. Under protest. Free then. Farrington, you're crazy, I tell you. Go away. Go, Bob. Please. Farrington, this is an outrage. It's our only chance. Now, hurry up. Please, no. Please. Too tight. I want to breathe. Too tight. The mustache. Oh, no. Not my mustache. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. Farrington, I quit. I resign. Erase it. No, no. Greetings, fellow Thursday. Oh, I, I ought to treat you with a good swift kick. Where have you been? I ought to hang you in front of the theater. Where are you, Irish clown? We've a bit of a problem here. Listen to that audience. Get into your costume. I said we've a bit of a problem. Miss White. Mr. Farrington. Hello. Hello. Don't stand there. Get dressed. I promised Miss White an audition. You what? She has great talent. She also has my costume. Yeah, for 98 bucks. 98? Cash. Well, if Miss Gibbs promised you an audition, you have come at a most opportune moment. Dean, Mr. Farrington, Not a really? word, not a oh, word. Oh, to... not at all, my oh, dear, not at all. Oh, terrific. don't thank me, it's no trouble. The Farrington players always keep a pack. We have the costume. Hey, but what about the 98? You have the audition. And an audience to boot. Oh, but don't murder me. You want to be an actress, don't you? Oh, but I never do. You have to learn to face all kinds of audience. Hi, Uh, I ain't part of the regular show. I'm just a little something extra to get things set back there. on the 
feeling. I got a knock, a knock, a knock, and on the wall, he takes a breather. No, he doesn't either. Just when I figure that's all, he goes a rumble, rumble, rumble on the black. He goes a tinkle, tinkle, tinkle on the wild. Rumble, rumble, rumble. Cooking himself a quiet kettle of tea up there Or maybe getting himself a girl and taking her out somewhere Instead of sitting around, reading the jokes, washing the socks, writing the books Taking the pills, sleeping the night through What does he do? What does he do? He goes and rumble, 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 look at the whole building crumble Tinkle, 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 look at the wallpaper wrinkle Rumble, 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 tinkle, tinkle, tinkle He could give it some me a top with his left hand. He goes grub, grub, grub with his right. A fumbly from grub, a fumbly from grub, a fumbly go bubble till he gets it right. Then he plays piano, plays piano all Hey, she's all right. Ideal curtain raiser for Shakespeare. That's enough. Places, everybody. Outside. Curtain. Mr. Fer Mr. Farrington. Do I get a job? Shh. Yes. Um, what about the 98 bucks? I should be very happy to take it out of your salary. Oh, gee, thanks, that's swell! Huh? Oh, gosh, I'm so happy. I'm scared any minute, and I'm gonna wake up. Child, never forget this moment, this happiness. Not even when they've broken your heart. And you're trying to put the pieces back together again. Promise me. Oh, don't you worry about me. I'll be all right. I learned to take it as it comes. No, I don't know. You have a brave heart, child. A brave heart, like all rare and very fine things, are easily broken. You know, Miss Gibbs, having you for a friend is just about the most wonderful thing that ever happened to me. Oh, child. Congratulations, Miss Fife. I understand from Mr. Farrington that you're going to be one of us. Oh, thanks. Gosh, Mr. Timmons, I guess this is something I've been wanting all my life. Oh, that's nice. Do you think I'll make it, Mr. Timmons? I mean, I can sing anyways. It ought to help some, huh? Well, not exactly, Miss Fife. Not exactly. You see, in singing, the voice is inclined to run away with you. In acting, the basic factor is voice control. You must be it master and not it yours. You must control it completely. Any questions? Yeah. What do you mean, control it? Well, uh, the voice is pitched to exactly the right volume, tuned to precisely the right tone, and projected. Sorry. Projected. Not just unloaded like a truckload of scrap iron. And how is the voice projected? With the lips? No. The esophagus? No. The lungs? No. The diaphragm? Yes. The diaphragm projects the voice from here, swelling, growing, rounding up to the lips and oh! Round like an orange. Always project to the rear of the theater. And remember, round like an orange. Oh! Not the pits. 
but the entire orange skin and all. Ah! Never enunciate like a lemon or a grape. Now, watch my lips carefully. <coughs> <coughs> Come, see the chrysanthemums budding. Note the enunciation. Chrysanthemums budding. Never a clip ing. Ing, 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 ing. Oh, Mr. Timmons was just showing me how to project my voice. One of these days, I'm going to project Mr. Timmons out on his ear. Mr. Faddington, that settles it. I quit. Miss White, I hope to make an actress out of you. Oh, Mr. Farrington. Sit down, please. To be an actress, Miss White, even a mediocre one, calls for hard work, backbreaking work. Day and night. The theater demands the best you've got. I demand it. You must consider no job too big, no task too small. I'll do anything. Honest, I will. That's the spirit. Start you in with a little mending. You've got a bad rip here, tear in there someplace. Oh, there's a bad one here. These are out at the heel, I think, yeah. Need them for tomorrow's matinee. See you in the morning. My lord, your carriage awaits. My lord, your carriage awaits. My oh, my petticoat, please. Yes, yeah, over here. There you are. Thank you, dear. How about my shirt? Oh, it ain't dry yet. I'll have to put it on wet. My lord, hey, girl, you got my thingamajig? Yeah. Hey, you better go easy on these. One more tube in your route. Thanks. My lord. Oh, my socks, girl. Down the end of the line, Timmy. My lord, your carriage awaits. My lord, your carriage awaits. No, no, no. More English. My lord, your carriage awaits. Me lord, your carriage. <laughs> Me lord, my lord, oh heck. Oh. Oh. Hurry, child, your honor. Oh, oh, please. Me lord, my lord, my lord, your carriage awaits. My lord, me lord, my lord, my lord. Oh, I'm so scared. There's nothing to be scared about. You'll be one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very clever, my lady. Your wit is surpassed only by your beauty. <laughs> Come in. My lord, you're carried away. Oh. Dynamic, Miss White. Positively explosive. Your entrance was like a 21 gun salute. My lord, your carriage awaits. For the love of heaven, can't you keep your hands down? Tonight. Yes, you will, dear, you will. But Lansford, you can't go on, you can't. You hurt, you hurt bad. I got to go, honey. This message must go through. Colonel Lansford! Colonel Lansford, sir! Yes, Magnolia! Them dirty Yankees are coming around by the old mill. Your 
better get out of here before the catch us up with you. Rest has done got 60 cents on up and she's a roar to go. Come on, Magnolia. Mr. Farrington, was I better? Much better. Oh, thanks, Mr. Farrington. Will you untie my hands now? Look, Miss Weiss. You're Maloa, a native princess. You just battled through a typhoon to tell me that you love me. And you act like you're selling popcorn. I'm sorry. Hey, boy, boy! Go out and have yourselves a beer on me. Give us a half hour of quiet. All right, let's take it again. Pick it up from, uh, many times you say... Many times you have seen I am very beautiful, Kanika Kyo. But your eyes, Kanika Kyo, they cannot look into my heart. So let your lips tell you what your eyes cannot see. The kiss. You're supposed to kiss me. lines, if you please. You do know the lines, don't you? Then say them! Or do we have to hire a prompter just for you? And what brought that on? Idiot! What's got into all the women around here? It's spring. Never meant much to us, I know, uh, but uh, lots of people get quite emotional about it. Oh, no. I am not interested in the flutterings of Miss White's emotions. Could be, if you gave yourself half a chance. You just concentrate on your boots. It'll keep your simple mind from wandering. Miss White! Miss White! On stage! completely objective about this, Miss White. If you're going to play Maloa, you'll be kissing me several times a week. And emotion has nothing to do with it. If you're going to be an actress, you'll have to learn that the man you're kissing is no more than another prop on the stage. Like a tree, a door, a wooden bench. Yes, Mr. Farrington. We'll begin with the last line. Your eyes cannot see. Now you know, Kanika Keel, more than if I spoke with words. Mine is yours, Mr. Farrington. What's the matter, Mike? To get your lines? We'll uh, continue rehearsals later. people of this island will no longer tolerate your disgraceful behavior. Why don't you mind your own business? Oh. Get around. 
Mom's pearls. Couldn't I get just a boo boo wet with warm boo water? Realism, my dear. Mr. Farrington is a stickler for realism. <gasps> then I suppose when it gets to the, to the, 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 the volcano eruption, he'll set me on fire. You drunken, shameless thought. I warn you, I shall go to the authorities. Go on, you old pity. Go away. Oh. Get out of here. Oh. Good luck. I told you to go away, you old biddy, and I'll go away. It is I, below. You! Oh, why do you torture me with all your loveliness? Why do you come here? Oh, below, below. Can I cook you? Can I cook you? Well... Can it? Can it go? Go on. Say it. You don't have to spare me. You won't be saying anything I don't already know. Say it. For the love of heaven, say it. What's the matter with you? Can't get cold. Can it go? Did you think that coming here would change anything between us? Or did you come to gloat over my despair? Well, you need an answer. I can see it in your eyes. <gasps> Don't say a word! I too! Gesundheit! Thank you. <laughs> We're lucky to be leaving town under our own power. Coming through. Say, prop. Better cover the name on that trunk. And I'd advise all you people to separate on your way to the depot. So if there's a mob with tar and feathers waiting, maybe some of us can get through. Oh, Mike, what's done, done. Forget it. Forget it? I'm willing. But will this town forget it? Why, every time the name of Farrington is mentioned, it'll be a belly laugh. Well, what's wrong with that? The way we played it tonight, it was more fun for everybody. Even the audience. I'm not running a burlicue. <coughs> Gesundheit. Shut up! Can I help it if I caught cold? You could have picked a more opportune time. Then you shouldn't have turned them fans on me when I was all wet. Wet or dry, you're a rotten actress. And it's not them fans, it's those fans. You can't speak English, you know, even if it is through your nose. Shut up, you ham! Ham? Yes, ham. If you're as good as you think you are, why ain't you on Broadway instead of hopping around from one whistle stop to the next one jump ahead of the sheriff? That's enough. Okay, maybe I am a rotten actress, but I tried, didn't I? Gave it everything I had, didn't I? Simply you're beating my brains out and treating me like something you scooped out of the gutter and you know why. Because it came from you, because I thought you were something extra special. The real McCoy. Ain't that a wow? Why, you're nothing but a cheap, two-bit bar story, four flusher. Where are you going, Puss? Back to the sweatshop. There's a heel run, that joint too, but in between me and a heel, once in a while, he has a kind word for you. Strange. When Pearl said those things, I found myself cheering. I don't think I'll be happy around here any longer, Mike. You see, it's a question of loyalty. And I'm too old to get them all mixed up. Very well. I'm not going to ask you to stay, Julia. I never beg favors. I never learned how. You'll learn, my friend. You'll learn. It'll come to you as you go along.
should have faded long ago. think of her? She's very good. Yeah, she's very good. What about the job? Well, Julia, you know how it is. Summertime. Show business is dead. Come back in September. In September, we'll be dead. Oh, oh now listen, Julia, you know I'd do anything for you, but I was, as I was saying, there's just no business in the summertime. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is Willie. Art crap. Come back and see us in a couple of months. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, Julia. Julia. Yeah, I've got one right here, if you'll play it. I can spot you in a grand damn part if you want it. When did rehearsals start? No, no, no. This ain't the legit. This is the flickers. You know, moon pictures. Yeah, maybe you got a run out of it. Three, four days. Those horrible things? What's horrible about them? They don't know if it's winter or summer. No, they eat all the time. Five bucks a day lunch and car fare. Lunch and car fare? She's in. I send her right over. Pearl, I will not. We gotta eat, ain't we? Haven't we? Haven't we? Where do we go? Come right along with me. Oh, you... If you two ever mention this to anyone, you're through as my agent. Oh, 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 I don't know. Julia. Julia. Gibbs, I'll tell you the scene. So if you want to watch, stay back here. Miss Gibbs, you're a Dutch, you see? Lots of class. You're mad at the help here, and you're going to fire her. Now, when I say, okay, Miss Gibbs, you'll hightail it in here through that door and just start bawling the pants yeah. off them. And then I'll cut, okay? But where are my lines? Lines? Oh, you don't need no lines. Something will come to you. Oh. Boy, thank you. She starts boiling you out, see? Then when I cue you, wing, let her have it. 
and smack in the kissing room. I ain't dipped her off, see? Will you get a better take? All right, everybody. This is a take. Places, everybody. Here we go. Give it about 12. Okay. Camera. Action! I'll do it. I brought it up. of this disturbance. Pack your things and leave this house right now. Now? Now! now. <laughs> Cut! Bring it! Get it clean! <laughs> Perfect, Gibby! Oh, boy! in that picture where you kicked the line. Get the right yes, sir. What line? The line you kicked in the cage. Come on to the office. I'll make out the contract. Why? <laughs> Holy smokes. I thought it was a dog. We're all ready, Chief. Oh, 
how can that villain be so awful mean? Just when she's in some desperate fight, and I'm about to die with fright, then goes the bill. Good night for calling. <laughs> can of film, and I can run it upside down and pack the house. <laughs> That's Pearl White going over Niagara Falls. Every time she does it, some jittery dame passes out cold. <laughs> you look at it. You cut your act down to five minutes, and I'll use you as a filler while we change reels. I'm not interested in fillers. Me neither. I was just trying to do you a favor. When I want charity, I'll come to you with a tin cup. <laughs> there. You see what I mean? Pearl White sure does lay him in the aisles. Yes, sir. I guess she's just about the biggest thing in pictures. Well, sorry I can't help you. Here she comes. And don't forget, we got to get this on the first take. Won't be another train along for five hours. Think you can make it, honey? Sure I can make it. On Pearl's third shot, Slim and Pinky will take a flopper road. And don't forget, fall in front of the camera. Let's go.
like. Are you a sight for sore eyes? Easy, easy. Oh, say, you've been doing all right for yourself. Doesn't look like one night stand. Uh huh. Big time now. Yeah. What? And my boss is interested in you. Your boss wants to talk to you. Waiting on the pier. Go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. I'll take over. Hey, come in, my kid. Look, you mean it's a job? You play your cards right, no telling what it'll lead to. Hurry, 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 hurry! Look at him, folks, a delight for the young, a solace for the old. And for the price of one thin dime, you can take one home with you. Remove the wrapper, shake well, and don't forget to read the instructions on the back of each and every box. What am I saying? Hurry, 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 get your tickets. Hello, Mike. Well, well. The great lady of the cinema. This is a privilege. Don't kid me, Mike. On the contrary. I frequently boast that I once had the honor of knowing you. Mike, don't. What are you doing down here? Slumming? Well, Timmy told me you were here and I... You were naturally curious. Well, I... I'm absorbing local color. You know me, a stickler for realism. Got a big part coming up on Broadway. Playing a carnival barker. Sort of a Lillian. You don't believe me, do you? Well, of course I do, Mike. Since it got around that I taught the great Pearl White how to act, you'd be surprised how much I'm in demand. Look where it's got me. You're still a sarcastic stinker, aren't you? And you're still a rotten actress. Oh, I know I am, Mike. I'm awful, and that's where you come in. Me? Yes. You see, if you could sort of be around me a lot, maybe be my leading man or something. I mean, you could help me. Yes? Go on. Oh, well, there's so much you could do for me, Mike. The films need you. I need you, Mike. Are you by any chance suggesting that I act in these animated tin types? Oh, don't get sore, that Mike. That I sacrifice all this? But, Mike... That I permit myself to be sold by the yard like, like so much linoleum? But, Mike, it pays $100 a week, and that's only a starter. Uh, when do we start? Oh, Mike! Savvy Pearl, you Lotus Blossom. Now grab her wig. Now, Timmy, sneer at her. All right, start choking her. Keep choking. Come on, Mr. Farrington. Come on, Farrington. Help! Stop. Cut. Now, now, now. Look, Farrington. All we got is a camera, see? It don't photograph no words. You gotta give it action. You gotta use your hands. You're acting like they was tied down. Here, let me show you. Stop! Unhand that woman, or I'll bust you in the kisser. See what I mean? You don't need actors, you need acrobats. What? Oh, Mike! Mike, what he means is, you've got a million-dollar personality and a great physique, and, and the audience will want to see you use it, won't they, boss? Huh? Oh, oh, sure. Why, when you come busting in through that door like a chunk of exploding dynamite, audiences are going to start cheering. Sure they will. Well, of course, if we're playing for homes for the feeble-minded, let's go. Give it to him, Mike. Take it easy, will you? Nah, boy, all right. We'll pick it up from where Timmy grabs Pearl. Feeble-minded, huh? Camera. Action! Ah, Mr. Farrington! <laughs> Stop! Unhand that woman! That's it! That's it! 
great. If that don't murder him, I'll eat the fill him. Oh, Mike, you were terrific. Get me out of here. I resign. I quit. <laughs> a balloon. I wonder what genius thought this one up. Who but McGuire? Should have known. It's a natural conclusion for McGuire. He's full of hot air, too. Hey, would you mind leaving some slack so my blood can get around a little? By all the hush hush, McGuire, is this a state secret or something? If we're going to make the afternoon edition, you better give us your story now. You'll make it all right. You'll make it all over the front page. I ain't never let you down yet, have I? No. Okay, then stick around a while. We're all ready, Chief. Just stick around. Wonder what kind of a whoop to do he's framing up now. You two know the scene, don't you? It's when Timmy cuts yeah, the rope. Yeah, yeah. Are you sure this thing's tied off good? You're as safe as in your mother's arms. Ready, Timmy? We'll make it. Let it up to position. All set, boys? All ready, boys. We'll make it. Look here. If anything happens to that girl, I'm going to run you through without even sharpening the point. Now, Julie, now, quit worrying, will you? I tell you, I got the thing oh, anchored. No. That rope that Timmy's going to cut is only a prop. Now, now, uh, quit never... worrying, will you? It's all right. Get set, everybody. Cameras. Action. Come on, Timmy. Get to that rope. Now, broaden your sawing action. Now, gnash your teeth. Gnash! Gnash! For the love of Pete, will you gnash? That's not gnashing. Cut. What's the matter with you? I was gnashing. You wasn't gnashing. You were chewing. This is chewing. This is gnashing. Can't you tell the difference between when you see it? Yeah, chew like a gnash and gnash like a chew. I shall compromise. I shall spit. <coughs> All right, once again. Camera. Action. Come on, Timmy. Sneak up on it. Now, Nash! Pearl, Mike, you know you're gonna die, but you're smiling at death. Okay, Pearl, a little sad now. Turn your head to the man you love. Now, smile sadly. Swell, great. Okay, Timmy, cut the rope! Get that balloon! Get me down! Get me out of here! Help! 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 I quit! Pull that balloon! It's running away! Grab it! Hey, how far is this contraption supposed to go up? Oh, I don't know. About 30 feet, I guess. And they're awful big feet. Huh? Oh, well, I wouldn't worry. They've got a rope on us. You mean this one? Yeah, that's... Oh! Hey, your story, just like I promised. Pearl White and her leading man trapped in a runaway balloon. Is that a story? Get going, Al. Ha, ha, ha. Get her down. You murderous Irish bug lover. Get her down. She's all right, Judy. I tell you, oh. she's all right. The balloon is right up there with her, hiding oh. in the basket. No, I ain't, Mr. McGuire. I'm here. I didn't get a chance to sneak in that basket like you said. Oh. Wait a minute. Don't hit me. Oh. Oh. 
Pearl, don't you know anything about balloons? Only that they put something in them. The way we're shooting up, it's probably full of some of your films. Instead of being so funny, why don't you do something about it? Me do something? You're the great serial queen, Fearless Fanny, the do-or-die gal. Why don't you do something? I don't know anything about them. Must be a valve or something. Maybe I could... Don't chase the basket! What's the matter? I don't feel so good. Move over. Oh, yeah. The eight Callahan boys are going to give out with O'Promise me. 
backed up by a 60-piece symphony orchestra. Hold it. Yeah. And get this. We're giving the honor of performing the wedding ceremony to his honor, the mayor. Not bad, eh? <laughs> Where did you first meet your fiance, Miss White? Oh, it was a long time ago in Danbury, Connecticut. He did her out of $98. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but he paid it back. <laughs> I'm ready for Miss White. Over here by the flower. Where's Mike? Mike? Farrington. Hey, Farrington. Here he is. Okay, Farrington, come on. We're ready for you. Snap it up. All right, over here by the flowers. No, no, no. Put your arm around it. Come on, turn your head. Give him a smile. Give him a load of that personality. All right, boys, shoot. Hold it. Now, one with Pearl and me in my office, making the arrangements for the honeymoon. Come on, Mike. You got plenty of time to see him. Where are we going on the honeymoon? We got a location department working on that now. Some of my boys suggested they get married in a balloon, like where he proposed to her. But I slapped them down, boy. <laughs> we gotta have dignity. A marriage ain't no hunky tonk show. I'm thinking about getting a special train and send them on a tour the country. Give the folks a chance to see it. He can do his stunt in every town. The thing's got so many possibilities. I get a headache thinking about it. Now, come on, get close together. Hey, Keep it quiet, will you, fellas? All right, hurry up. Hurry up. Yeah. Holy smoke, I'll be right down. What is it, Mr. President? The President is calling a special session of Congress to declare war on Germany. Oh. Hey, wait a minute, boys, wait a minute. You ain't heard the rest of the plan. We're going to have a reception right now. How do you like that? Everything happens to me. War. They couldn't hold off till after the wedding. No. They gotta do it now and gum up everything. War. Oh, well, that's horrible. You said it. Now we gotta rewrite the last six episodes. Hey, where are them writers? Mike. We gotta write the war in. Battle, cannons, warships. Where are them guys? I'll get them. Looping on the job. Don't they know there's a war going on? What's the matter, Mike? Nobody talks here. Nobody's supposed to even think here. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen. Step right up and have your talking and thinking done for you while you wait. No more problems to decide. It's all done for you. Cost you nothing but your self-respect. Hey, you sound like you've been hoisting one too many, Mike. Perhaps. Just trying to keep up the illusion that I'm a man. Mike, no man has to do what he doesn't want to do. Mr. Timmons, in your unparalleled wisdom, you have uttered a truism. No man has to do what he doesn't want to do. But you've left no room for the half-man, half-slave. I don't get it. You love her, don't you? Of course. That's not enough. Look, you're doing all right for yourself. A lot better than those one-night stands. Is it? I wonder. So, what's the answer? There's only one answer. Am I breaking in on something? Uh, no. See you later. What's this all about? Just the turning of a worm. No, I take that back. Not even a worm. I've lost my identity. A nothing. A zero minor. Oh, Mike, you're still head man with me. What's wrong with the woman helping the man she loves? Nothing. Nothing at all. In this case, it's a fine business arrangement. I get paid for every kiss, with time and a half for overtime. Mike, you're drunk. Confidentially, I'm cockeyed. This business will get anybody that way. Mike, what are you talking about? Look, the only reason I got into this lunacy was to help you. I felt I could build you up. Make you play a scene without looking like something on a wire. Built you up. <laughs> you dragged me down to where you are. Dragged you down? Why, you cheap, insufferable, conceited snob. Dragged you down. I'll fix that. Mike. Mike, why are you doing this? 
You must have a reason. I believe you're doing it to get out of marrying me. That's why, isn't it? Answer me, isn't it? I'm sorry, girl. Oh, but Mike, Mike, you can't stop loving me like that. You said you loved me and you meant it. I know you did. You can't stop just like, like turning off the gas or something. Let's just say I'm a four-flushing ham, as you once described me. Let it go at that. All right, Mike. I guess if a man feels that way, a girl would be a fool to try and hold him. Maybe someday you'll change your mind. But it'll be too late. So run along, Mr. Farrington. It hasn't been fun. Pearl. Get out! That's fine. That's the spirit that gets her started. Let's go, Pearl. Take five. Remember, folks, 50,000 gets us to the top. Now, now who's going to get a thousand? One, one thousand. Take one, Pearl. Remember, 50,000. Three. Three. Three thousand. Take three, Pearl. Step right up here and fill out the application book. That's it. Come on. Come on.
So what if they are laughing at cereals? They gotta buy tickets to do that, don't they? Pearl White is true. True? Not while I got a few bucks, she ain't. I'll up the advertising budget. But the audiences don't want cereals anymore. They're growing up. Moving pictures got to grow up with them. Growing up? Ain't I growed up? But I'm still a little boy at heart. Same with audiences. You just ain't doing a good selling job. We're losing money on them. Excuse me. A wireless for you, Miss McGuire. I thought it might be important. How would you know what bad business is? You put up four walls with seats in it. I feed you the film, and all of a sudden you're a bunch of geniuses. Jake. Maybe I am being a little too tough about this. I realize you have your troubles. <laughs> Who hasn't? And old friends, you gotta stick together. Tell you what I'll do. I'll send Pearl on a little vacation. Cancel this cereal, and you boys can have the Western. Now you're talking <laughs> fancy. Well, I take back everything I was thinking about you. You'll never regret this, Mac. <laughs> we gotta eat, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah? Who? Farrington. I'll see him in a minute. All right, run along, you thief, so you can keep your eye on your cashiers. <laughs> Gonna be a bigger and better year, man. We'll make you a rich man in spite of yourself. And don't forget the contract. You know me, my word is my bonus. Come on in. Hello, Mac. Well, well, the talk of Broadway. And here in poor little me's office. And after so many years. What did you come for, to read me your reviews? Where's Pearl? Oh, you want to read her the reviews? I went to her hotel, she's checked out. Where is she? Ain't you heard her enough? Yes. <laughs> so you agree with me, you heel? Go on, I'm a busy man. Get going, will you? Mac, if you don't tell me where she is, I'm gonna do something that you won't think is funny. Such as what? Such as punch you right in the nose. Oh, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's it to you? What do you want to know where she is for? I happen to love her. Oh, well. Here. You want to drop everything and rush right over after her? I can't. Not until the show closes. I never thought I'd live to see the day when I, a motion picture producer, would be grateful to a Broadway competitor. I hope the play runs forever. You're gonna punch me in the nose. <laughs> said a word in 30 seconds. What's wrong, Julia? Just sitting here, thinking of a great, big, beautiful man. Why, Julia! Just happened to be reading Variety. Just happened to come across a little item saying Mike Parrington's play had closed after a very successful run. Just happened. It just happens. I read Variety, too, and I'm not interested. <laughs> Does it also happen you received a wireless from his boat? Well, you know, it's addressed to you. It says he'll be here tomorrow night. He wants to make you a little speech. He's been rehearsing. What am I supposed to do now? Holler for the smelling salts? Miss White, on stage, please. All right. Why don't you stop kidding yourself, child? That's just what I am doing. Does he think he can cuff me out of his way any time he pleases and when he whistles, I'll come running? No thanks, I don't want any more. Might you quote that in the wire? In full, and don't try to cut it down to ten words.
Julia, have you sent that wire yet? Not yet. <sighs> Don't. Send this one instead. I will meet you at the depot. That's only seven words. I'll tell him the other three when he gets here. Oh, darling. Hey, Julia, I'm so happy. Have you quite finished with the stage, Miss White? Is it all right for me to go on now? It's all yours, Mr. Timmons. Thank you. Uh. Go on, get it over. Will I give him a stunt tonight? Uh -huh. so many x-rays last night. You must know something. I've got to know now. I can take it. How bad is it? We have agreed that with surgery, then therapy, you may in all likelihood walk again. May? When? Well, injured nerves heal slowly. When? It might take one or two years. But even after that, you couldn't be sure. Oh, Miss White, you mustn't be discouraged. You know, we doctors always look on the worst side of things. We will be able to tell much more about after the operation. Thank you. I understand. I'll make all the necessary preparations. Oh, wait a minute. I can't go now. Not until tonight. I have a date. Miss White, this has to be done at once. I'm sorry. It must wait. It's only for a little while. I have to meet someone. If you do, we won't be responsible, Miss White. Julia, call the beauty shop. I want my hair done and a facial and a manicure. It's madness. Pearl, please. The doctors know what's best. Do they, Timmy? I never went to medical school, but I'll bet all they ever taught them about the heart was that it pumps blood. Right? Miss Gibbs, we forbid it. She's taking a terrible risk. She's done that all her life. Neither you nor anyone else can change it. You being French should understand. Please. Well, have her at the hospital as soon as you can this evening. Thank you, Doctor. I know what you have in mind, Pearl. It's completely stupid. It wouldn't make any difference to Mike. I don't intend to let it make any difference. Timmy, when it's time, will you come and carry me down to the car? You've carried me for years. That's the least I can do. Come on, Julia. Start making me pretty. I've got a date with a man. Wonderful seeing you again, Mike. We've been following your career in variety. We all think you're pretty wonderful. Pearl, a long time ago, Julia told me that someday I'd learn to beg. That's why I came over. Will you marry me? Come back to America? Back to America? Oh, Mike, I couldn't. I belong here. This is my town. Why, every time one of these Frenchmen holler bravo, I, I want to jump right over the footlights and kiss them. I love it. No, Mike, I, I couldn't give it up. 
Then you don't have to. I'll stay here. All I want is you. You know, Mike, I've waited for this day. The night you walked out on me, I began to make up things I'd say if this moment ever arrived. Each day, I'd add something new, something a little more violent. You don't know what it does to a girl to be jilted, Mike. Here you are. Nothing. I'm not angry. I am not anything. It just isn't important to me. What do you mean? I mean, Mike, I don't love you anymore. Oh, I knew I had to get over you. You taught me how to be a perfectionist, remember, Mike? Well, I'm afraid it's perfectly complete. And now let's forget about it. You're in Paris, one of the gayest cities in the world. And there's no reason on earth why we can't have a wonderful time together. No, thanks. There's been a sudden change in my plans, and I'd like to get home. Do you mind dropping me off here? Pierre, pull over to the curb. No hard feelings, Mike. Of course not. It's all been very lovely, as well as educational, this way. Catch the act, Timmy. First time in my life I give a good performance and nobody's around to see it. I had just the right shading. <laughs> I guess I'll never learn. 